Hello, hello, Crossroads witches and other interested magical beings. I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that is the goddess Hecate, Hecate. Uh, both are correct, just so y'all know. Uh, it's regional. It's like talking to a northerner and talking to a southerner. All right. Uh, depends on what side of the mountain you're standing on. As to the pronunciation, I tell folks, close your eyes, Hecate. Does that ring with you? Close your eyes. Hakate. Does that ring with you? The one that does is the one that you should properly use. So we're going to be talking about offerings to Hecate. Uh, one of the questions I get is, oh, well, what did they do in history? What was the historical offerings to Hecate? And I always have to stop and be like, all right, take a deep breath, witches, because I'm going to tell you. The oldest offering that we know to Hecate is the sacrificing of black dogs and puppies. Yeah, I know. I know. I feel it right now. Believe me, y'all are like, oh, I'm not going to kill a puppy. We cannot compare ourselves to them. They lived in a different world. All right. They had different norms. Their relationship with gods and goddesses, deity with divinity was different. I mean, these are people that are just trying to make it through winter. Uh, making it to your 30, 30th birthday is like, woo, I'm old. All right. Uh, many, many cultures, blood sacrifices was very common. All right. That was how they did it. Now, that's antiquity. <laughs> All right. Uh, not how we do it. And also, I think that, uh, like I said, it was their time with it, and that was how uh, Hecate was relating to them. I think that's how all aspects of divinity were relating to the people in their time and their moment. Now they're relating to us in our time and our moment, okay? Yes, we can look to the past for inspiration. We stand in this moment and we're going forward, you know, and to remember that. The oldest of the shrines to Hecate are crossroads, where a small shrine was put up. They were also put up at the gates, the entrances to, to towns, to villages for protection, okay? Traveling was very dangerous. Traveling is still dangerous. That ain't changed none. Uh, but it was at a crossroads. And yes, that was the sacrifice of the time for them. And we think, how do I translate into this, uh, This, you know, where what is my modern sacrifice? Well, I live in a modern world and I have to look around at my world, how it relates to me. And I think one of the most meaningful things that we can do is to share the food that we've created to take a piece of hearth and home because when we're creating food to serve that is the the actual essence of hearth and home um and to give a small food offering and i think that food offering for each of us is different i don't think there's a list uh, and this might be controversial for some folks who are like, yes, there is. She likes this, this, and this. Her colors are this, this, and this. And she's associated with this, this, and this. Um, and I think that that person is speaking their truth. But I'm not sure if they're speaking my truth. All right? My relationship with Hecate. All right? How she is uh, whispering to me type thing. You know, how I'm connecting to her. And these are all questions you're going to have to ask yourself. That's the biggest thing I got to tell you right now, which is y'all want to go look it up in a book. Can't look this one up in a book. You know, um, think about you, what, what, what do you, the first words when you think of Hecate, all right? You know? and how you relate to her and let that start to form the basis of what's appropriate offerings for you and understanding that like for her it was t she's an everyday person goddess uh she comes to us past the greco-roman 
uh, goddess of antiquity, and then came into the, the Greco-Roman pantheon. That's where some stories developed about her. We see in the later part of the Greco-Roman time is where they put a temple up. But that's just because they put, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, oh shit, Romans put temples up to everything. So after Hecate had been with them for a while, they gave her a temple. All right. Uh, we recently here in the past couple years uh, have uncovered one of these temples to Hecate. It is in modern day Turkey. Now, the, the really cool thing about this uh, blah blah is I'm putting it out there is what I said earlier, she's in uh, every man, every woman, every person's uh, goddess. She did not have an actual priesthood. Uh, if you went, everybody was welcome at Hecate's temple. It was a place where you went for, for protection, um, for solstice, and also for justice. Uh, where, what was the average person going there for? Uh, they were going for protection for themselves, for somebody they cared about, for a family member. They would leave an offering to her. We know at this time period, not so much with dog sacrifices, a lot more with what were called sweet burnt offerings. So they were burning herbs to her. No, we don't know what those herbs are. Yes, we have a couple of ideas, all right? Um, and sometimes I'm like, should we know our, should we not the herbs, the resins that call to us today use them? Whereas other folks will say, no, these are the offerings she's used to, so these are the ones you have to continue giving her. And I'm like, I don't think so. You're telling me that she lives like in this little homostasis bubble that never changes and it's always the same. I think Hecate moves along just like we do and she changes. In fact, I think divinity now relates to us as modern people differently than how divinity related to folks 3,000, 30,000 years ago because their needs were different and their relationship with the earth with their ecosystem was different, all right? Uh, and yes, there's a lot of, I know, up, down, and backward in what I'm saying, where I'm like, yes, no, yes, no, yes. And that's part of the whole problem of what is the proper offering to the goddess Hecate? Where do I take it? What do I say? The proper offering to Hecate is the one that you feel compelled to to give her. All right. Honor, reverence, and respect. And to think those words really deep. Honor, reverence, and respect. That's what you should be giving her. And how you take that into physical realm and whatever objects, you know, uh, a lot of us like to leave keys. It is our modern day offering to Hecate. Uh, that may resonate with you, okay? Uh, some folks, the idea of a purple fruits, purple uh, offering types, that may resonate with you. Uh, the offering of certain types of meat dishes, vegetable dishes, that may resonate with you. Starting to see what I'm saying here now, all right? There isn't a simple, and, and I know a, a lot of times, you know, content creators are like, here, five offerings to Hecate. And again, I think they're correct for them. I just don't know if it's correct for me. And so when you're talking about giving an offering to Hecate, it needs to come from that place and they're here inside of us that's meaningful, that we're connected to. And this is our gift. This is our offering to her. And if that's how you're feeling on whatever you're holding in your hand, that is the offering to give to her. Typically with Hecate, uh, the last uh, day of uh, the month, is Hecate's day. You can leave an offering. Um, there are a lot of other mythologies. The full moon, you can leave an offering. It 
I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, Hecate has about three different uh, anniversary, birthdays, feast days, and everything else. Back to which one makes sense to you? Which one are you resonating with? All right. And that is what you need to do. And write it down in your book. Get, you know, out, get out your, your grimoire, BOSs, journals, book of me's. Write a couple of notes about Hecate. How, about how you feel about her, not what you read, what you feel. And then from there, form the perfect offering for her from you, which, because that's what it's really about. All right. Now, I know I went off here, there, and sideways, and I hope y'all followed me along on that one. Of course, yes, 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 comments below on how you are translating antiquity into our modern practice. I'm definitely interested in hearing that. And as always, thank you so much, witches, for all of your support. Uh, and for all of you witches and which are following me on TikTok, yay! Uh, I'm having fun over there and everything. And so make sure you hit the subscribes, hit the likes, hit the follows, whatever else you're supposed to do. And with that said, get out there, fly those brooms, have a bright, blessed day.